The American Civil War had just ended when a Lithuanian immigrant landed in Baltimore, Maryland and set up a small tailor shop. Charles Bank worked hard and his little business grew. And after some time, he began manufacturing pants that he wholesaled to other shops in the area. In 1898, 11-year-old Joseph A. Bank began cutting cloth in the shop to help out his grandfather, Charles. As little Joseph matured and learned the trade, he eventually became a traveling salesman, going from shop to shop throughout the South, wholesaling pants for his grandfather as he expanded the territory and the business grew. He discovered his future wife and partner-to-be, Anna Hartz, who was also a traveling salesperson, selling her mother's clothing line from town to town. Joseph and Anna married, and the two business rivals joined forces and began manufacturing suits, selling to an ever broader region. As the wholesale clothing company grew, so did their family. Business was booming, and in 1940, on the eve of World War II, they purchased a building at 105 Hopkins Place in Baltimore, adding more space for their offices, showroom, cutting, sewing, and shipping. Joseph's son, Howard, carried on the tradition and became involved in the family business. Peace finally came, and following World War II, there was a severe shortage of men's tailored clothing. So the company focused on turning out a quantity of quality goods. To help satisfy the public's need, Joseph A. Bank Clothiers opened their first retail store at an existing location near the White House in Washington, D.C. In 1954, as his business was just evolving from wholesale to retail, Joseph A. Bank passed away and his son Howard became company president. Under Howard's leadership, the company began opening more stores and slowly expanded in the mid-Atlantic region. As sales grew, customers wrote in requesting swatches of cloth so that they could mail order merchandise, which led to the development of the first catalog. The early catalogs were just mimeographed price lists with some swatches that were mailed to several hundred names. It soon grew to become a 16-page brochure with drawings of merchandise and 64 attached cloth swatches. The catalog became a means of taking mail order customers behind the scenes to see their tailored garments being hand constructed. And just across the street, the new Civic Center opened in Baltimore in 1964, featuring Frank Sinatra, Bob Dylan, and the Beatles. And the catalog proudly invited customers to come visit. By 1970, the Rolling Stones had been to town and the catalog had grown to 24 pages with an order form and request cards for your friends. In 1981, food giant Quaker Oats was diversifying their interests and they made Howard Bank a business offer he couldn't refuse. Quaker Oats purchased and continued to grow the company, but after five years, they reversed business strategy and sold the company. Joseph A. Bank Clothiers went public in 1994 and continued on its course growing to over 100 stores by 1999 when a new management team was formed. An aggressive campaign was devised and launched to quadruple the size of the company in just a decade. Over 400 new stores have opened under that plan, and an award-winning internet business has been launched that continues to grow the company. What began as an immigrant's dream in a small tailor shop grew through the hard work of his grandson. Joseph A. Bank Clothiers has become a family including over 5,000 members in more than 500 locations across America, becoming the dominant power in men's retail clothing from coast to coast. The experts in men's apparel who have mastered the art of providing customer satisfaction, over a century's heritage of product quality and earning the distinction of being the best. Joseph A. Bank.